In this video, we will look at a force problem involving friction. Uh, as you can read here, there's been an accident and a driver has slammed on his brakes and skidded to a halt, uh, leaving skid marks 35 meters long. Now the driver claims that he was only doing 55 miles an hour, which works out to be 24.6 meters per second, when he hit the brakes. And so your job as an accident reconstructionist, which is a real, real job by the way, um, is to verify or refute this claim. So to do this, we're going to follow the same procedure we do for all our force problems. We're going to be um, going to start by asking ourselves what objects are involved, what forces are acting between these objects, use that information to create an, uh, an accurate free body diagram, and then from that free body diagram we will uh, generate uh, an equation on the x-axis and the y-axis. Okay, upon investigation you find out that the mass of the car was about 1200 kilograms. It was a 2012 Honda Civic. You checked the road conditions the day of the accident and you found that it had rained a little bit earlier than the accident and so roads were damp and the tires were in good shape and so your estimate of the coefficient of kinetic friction on the road that day was 0.5 which is of course lower than optimal. Uh, dry road, dry rubber usually around 0.8. So these were not the best braking conditions that day. So with this information, let's figure out just how much uh, Mr. Limbaugh could have decelerated that day. So let's start the way we always do. What objects were involved in the problem? Well, we know there was the car and the road and the entire earth. And I think for this problem we will neglect any uh, wind resistance or air drag though in reality that would have been somewhat important but we'll, ex we'll ignore it today. So between the earth and the car of course was the weight force. The road exerted a perpendicular normal force as well as a parallel frictional force. And so I look at this and I see three forces acting on the car so now I'm going to draw free body diagram. So here is the car and the weight will be straight down, the normal force will be up, and the force of friction will be to the left because we'll assume the car was traveling to the right in our picture. Alright, so we have a couple forces on the y-axis and a single force on the x-axis. So let's come over here and do x and y and the sum of the forces on the x-axis will be equal to MAX and the sum of the forces on the y-axis MAY. We'll start with the y-axis here. Uh, obviously we have two forces competing and so we will subtract so normal minus the weight equals well obviously the car did not accelerate up or down so that side is zero so the normal force would in this case be identical to the weight and we know that the weight of an object is also equal to its mass times accelerate times the force of gravity at this point this location and so we can assume that the normal force acting on the car from the ground would be equal to 1200 times and let's use 10 today 12,000 newtons all right. Over here on the x-axis, we only have one force. So the kinetic friction force has to equal ma. Well, we know that friction is fun, so mu normal equals ma. And we know that the normal force is actually 12,000, so we insert 0.5 times 12,000 equals 1200A. So we have 6000 equals 1200A. So A is equal to actually 5 meters per second per second. And because we know the friction was going in the negative direction, we can put a negative sign here. So you have determined 
that given the road conditions, the very best that Mr. Limbaugh could have decelerated would have been about minus 5 meters per second per second. Well, let's find out whether Mr. Limbaugh was telling the truth or not. He claimed that he was initially traveling at 55 miles an hour or 24.6 meters per second and that he skidded to a halt and this took him 35 meters and so with this information we will figure out just what kind of deceleration that was and then we can compare it to the answer we've already received from the force information of minus 5 meters per second every second so with this information this equation VF squared equals VI squared plus 2 a delta x would be appropriate so 0 squared is 24.6 squared plus 2 a times 35 so 0 equals 605 plus 70 a minus 605 is 70 a so the acceleration turns out to be actually a fairly large 8.6 meters per second per second. So I'm afraid Mr. Lindball is looking at some of jail time or a fine um, because he claimed that he was able to decelerate at negative 8.6 meters per second per second, but our other information involving friction showed that he could not have decelerated any more than at negative 5 meters per second per second, so his claim is therefore refuted.